Afro Tales Podcast is a part of the Connected Podcast Network. Ahoy, my friends. Welcome aboard the Afro Tales Podcast. I'm your storyteller, Aman Mazinga. Join me as we explore the tales that grew from the people of indigenous and African descent in the Americas and the Caribbean. After, come and see me, chef, who will impart upon you a recipe for the story you have just heard. So with no further ado, let us set sail on this new age of exploration. Montezuma, Part 2 Chapter 4, The Return of Quetzalcoatl One day a poor man who had no ears, no thumbs, and no big toes came before Montezuma and explained that he had something to tell. Wondering what kind of creature this could be, Montezuma asked where he had come from. From dead woods, was the reply. And who had sent him? He had come of his own to serve and to tell what he had seen. He had been walking along the ocean, he said, when he noticed what seemed to be a large moving hill from one place to another on the water. And no such thing had ever been seen before. Very well. Rest yourself. Catch your breath. Then he called his storekeepers and told him to lock the man up and watch him carefully. As the prisoner was being taken away, the king had ordered his chief servant, Talankali, to leave immediately for the seacoast and find out if the man with no thumbs had been telling the truth. Take Take along your slave girded lions. Go to the ruler who serves me, Quetalashan, and speak harshly with him. Who stands guard here? Is there something on the ocean? Why hasn't the king been told, and what is it? When they go to Quetalashan, they ask for the ruler and gave him the king's message, word for word. Sit down and rest, said the ruler. Then he sent a runner along the shore to find out the truth. And when the man returned, he was running fast. I I see something like two pyramids or a pair of hills, he said. It moves on top of the water. The chief server and girded loins went to look for themselves. They saw the thing moving not far from the beach. And there were seven to eight men who came out of a little boat, fishing with fishes. To get a better view, they climbed a whitewood tree, a very bushy one, and watched until the fishermen returned to the twin pyramids with their catch. Then the chief service said, Get it, lions? Let's go. And they climbed out of the tree, went back to pay their respects to the ruler, and returned to Mexico. When they reached the city, they went directly to the place to tell Montezuma what had been seen. Lord King, it is true. An unknown kind of people has come to the edge of the ocean. And we saw them fishing from a boat with poles, some with nets. When they had made their catch, They went back to the two pyramids that float on the water and were carried up into them. There may have been fifteen in all, dressed in different colors, blue, brown, green, dirty, gray, and red. They had headdresses like cooking pots that must be for protection against the sun. Their skin is very light, lighter than ours. Most have long beards, and their hair hangs only to their ears. At this news, Montezuma bowed his head and without saying a word, put his hand on his mouth and sat motionless for a long time, as though he were dead, dumb, powerless to speak. At last he said, Who can I trust if not you? A lord in his palace. You bring me the truth every day. Then he told the storekeeper to go get the man with no thumbs and set him free. But when they went to the locker and opened the door, the man wasn't there. 
he had disappeared. The storekeeper was amazed and ran to tell Matazuma, who was also amazed. But after a moment's thought said, No, I am not surprised. Because almost all those people from the coast are wizards. And then he said, Now I will give you an order you must keep secret on pain of death. If you reveal it to anyone, I will have to bury you beneath my chair. And all your wives and children will be put to death. And everything you have will be taken away. And all your houses torn down. And their foundations dug up until the water spurts from the ground. Secretly. Then I want you to bring me the two best gold casters. The two best jade collars. And the two best feather workers. And without delay, the storekeeper sent and found them. Lord, they are here, he called. Show them in, answered the king. And when he saw them, he said, My fathers, you have been brought for a particular purpose. Reveal it to any man, and you will suffer the death and all penalties, houses uprooted, loss of possessions, and deaths of your wives, children, and relatives. Now, each of you must make two works. There must be a gold neck chain, each link four fingers wide, with pendants and medals and gold wristbands, ear jewels, fans, one with a gold half moon in the center and the other with a polished gold sun that can be seen from far away. You must do this quickly as possible. In only a few days and nights, the work was finished. And in the morning when Montezuma was awake, they sent for his dwarves to tell him to come to the hall of the birds to see what had been made. My lord, examine it. They said when they saw him coming and when he examined it, he found it good. He called for his storekeeper and said, Take these grandfathers of mine and give them each a load of coarse mantles of four, eight and ten forearms mixed, also fine mantles, blouses, and skirts for my grandmothers, and corn, chilies, squash, seeds, cotton, and beans. And with these things the workers went home contented. Montezuma then showed the jewels and the featherwork to his chief server and said, Here, the gifts are finished. You must take them to the one who has arrived, the one we have been expecting. I am convinced it is the spirit Quetzalcoatl. When he went away, he promised to come back and rule in Tula and in the world. The old people of Tula are certain of this. And before he left, he buried his treasure in mountain ravines and in canyons. And these are the gold and precious stones we find today. Since it's known that he would return from this place in the sky beyond the ocean, a place called the House of Dawn, where he went to meet with another spirit. And since it is certain that all kinds of jewels in the world were once part of his treasure, it can only be that he now returns to enjoy what is his. Even this throne is his, and I'm only borrowing. Return immediately to Kate Talshan and have the ruler make up all kinds of dishes, tamales, rolled tamales, tortillas, with and without beans, all kinds of grilled birds, quail, grilled deer, rabbit, chili powder, stewed greens, and every kind of fruit. If you see he eats these things, you will know he is Quetzalcoatl. If he does not eat them, you will know it is not he. If he likes only human flesh, and if he eats you, all will be well because I myself will protect and maintain your houses, your women, and your children forever. Have no fear of it. Take girded loins with you. And if you see by the signs that their Lord is Quetzalcoatl, adorn him with the jewels and give him the two large fans, 
humbly beg him to let me die. And when I am dead, he may come enjoy his mat and throne, which I have been guarding for him. The next morning, the chief servant girded loins set out with the gifts. The moment they reached Ketrashen, they told the ruler to prepare the food. Using the finest olas and baskets, and at midnight, they carried it all to the edge of the ocean, so that by daybreak, they were there, waving their arms and signaling across the water. The small boat was lowered. Four men came rowing to shore to greet them and to ask who they were and where they were from. But the Mexicans answered them only in signs, saying they wished to be taken to their Lord to give him things they had brought. Then they loaded the food in sacks with gifts and rowed back across. When they reached the ship, the captain appeared with an Indian woman, Malatsin, who translated his words. Come here, she said. Where are you from? We are from the great city of Mexico, Tenochtitlan. Why do you come here? Oh, lady, our daughter, we have come to see your lord. Then Malitzin drew to an inner room and spoke to the captain. When she reappeared, she asked, Who is your king? Lady, his name is Montezuma. Why did he send you? What did he say? He wants to know where this lord intends to go. This lord is your guide. And he says he will go see King Montezuma. That will please him very much. But he begs this Lord to let him finish his reign, waiting till after his death before ruling the country he left when he went away. Then the Mexicans opened their sacks and presented the jeweled gifts and the two giant fans. And when these had been received by the captain, they were passed from hand to hand, and the Spaniards admired them with much joy and great satisfaction. Oh, lady, daughter, said the Mexicans, we have also brought food for the Lord and chocolate for him to drink. The spirit will eat this food, but first he must see you eat from it yourselves. When the Mexicans had done as they were asked, the Spaniards all ate offering the chief server and girded loins some sea biscuits, which were a little stale, and wine that made them drunk. They said they wished to return with an answer to their Lord Montezuma. What is your name? My name is Tilankaki, said the chief server. Then she gave him this answer. Tell Montezuma he kissed his hand and will be back in eight days and come see him. Carrying these words, the Mexicans returned to their king and reported everything that had happened, describing the weapons they had seen and the horses and showing him one of the biscuits. What flavor does it have? Asked the king and touching it, he declared that it felt like tufa stone. He called for a piece of tufa, compared it, and found that the biscuit was heavier. Then he called for his dwarves and ordered them to try it. And though they said it was good tasting, Montezuma was afraid to eat it himself, saying that this was the food of gods. Instead, he ordered his priest to bring it to Tula and bury it in the temple of Quetzalcoatl. They took the biscuit placed it in a fine jar, all worked with gold, and covered the jar with cloth. Then they traveled north from Mexico, carrying incense burners. They sang songs of Quetzalcoatl, and when they reached Tula, they buried the spirit's food to the sound of shell trumpets and roaring conch horns. Chapter 5. Is it you? When the Spaniards arrived at the edge of the city, things came to a head, and it reached the point where Montezuma fixed himself and got dressed to meet them, along with the other high lords and princes who were his chiefs and nobles. And so all went to make the greeting. 
Finding flowers were placed at the gourd tray with popcorn, yellow to baco, and koa flowers surrounded by shield and heart flowers in wreaths and garlands. And they brought gold necklaces, collars, and neck bands so that when Montezuma met them there at Hummingbird Point, he had gifts for the captains and warlords. Then he gave them the flowers, necklaced them with flower necklaces, adorned them with flowers, and wreathed their heads. Then he showed the Marquis all the necklaces made of gold, and he necklaced him with a few of them, and the greetings came to a close. Then the Marquis said to Montezuma, Is it you? Are you he? Are you Montezuma? Yes, I am, said Montezuma. And he arose and went over to him and made a low bow. Then he pulled himself up to full height, stood straight, and addressed him, saying, My lord, you must be tired. You must be weary. You have arrived in the city of Mexico. You have reached this mat and throne of yours that I have held for you briefly. I have been taking care of things for you. Gone are those rulers of yours. It's Koto, Montezuma the Elder, Ashkiata, Tiso, Awisoto, who briefly stood guard for you. Governing this city of Mexico, I, your servant, came after them. I wonder, can they look back and see over their shoulders? If only just one of them could see what I see, could marvel at what is happening to me now. For this is no dream. I am not sleepwalking, not seeing things in my sleep. I am not dreaming that I see you and look into your face. Indeed, I have been troubled for as many days as there are fingers on my two hands. I have gazed into the unknown, and I have seen you coming out of the clouds, out of the mist. Those kings used to say that you would come back to our city and proceed to your mat and throne, that you would return. And this has come true. You are here. You must be tired. You must be weary. Welcome to this land. Rest yourself. Go to your palace and rest your body. Our lords are welcomed here. The end. Well, yeah, we kind of knew that was coming, right? Again, from the book of Latin American Folktales by Jean Beerst, part two, we kind of knew what was coming. But the way he prepared to hand over his kingdom, excuse me, <laughs> um... Can we, the people, talk about this first? Who are these people coming? But I guess what would you do if you, for the first time, see a ship on the horizon? Like, these ships were massive. I wouldn't be so... I mean, these are warships. These are galleons. There are hundreds of people aboard these ships and... They're coming at you. Now, I have a problem with the Indian lady um, that was helping Cortez. Because I'm like, did she kind of, you know, give them the 401? Like, yeah, these are some very superstitious people. When they come to you, you're just say you're a god. And, and you won't even have to fight. Because I feel like that's what happened there, right? Like, she basically, you know set it up like yeah oh yeah he's yeah he's a god of, of course he's a god like, he's, he's not a regular human like the rest of you he you just bow down to him and and we'll make this easy like was her people captured like how did they even how did she even get on the ship you know that's that was a big thing for me i didn't 
I couldn't find it. And I will say, though, reading this story, and I'm hurt the way it ended in this book. I wanted to go further, but I guess that's the point, right? You and I will now go further and do more research to see why or what occurred afterwards if you don't already know. If this isn't your history, you don't know what happens um, in detail after this occurrence. We know the grand um, fallout. The Aztec Empire comes to an end. Spain takes over Central America and later on Mexico finally fights back against Spain to gain its freedom hundreds of years later but what happened in those first few months and years I don't know if you know let me know but I'm going to do some research and I'm going to find out right I hope it was a great story and I hope it gave you a little bit more insight on what was going on for the Aztecs and Montezuma in those final days of their empire. So, again, go see Chef. He's going to have another great uh, recipe for you based on this story. And as always, <laughs> have a blessed day. Welcome, my friends, to the galley. I am your chef, chef, and today we have a wonderful recipe inspired by the story you have just heard. Today, we will be creating Aztec chocolate cookies. Now, what will you need for this recipe? One and a half cups of all-purpose flour, one teaspoon of ground ginger, one teaspoon ground cinnamon, one eighth teaspoon of ground chipotle chili, one tablespoon of cocoa powder, half a cup of butter, and half a cup of brown sugar, a quarter cup of honey, one teaspoon baking soda, one teaspoon vanilla extract, preferably Mexicano seven ounces of semi-sweet chocolate chips and a quarter cup of sugar. Now, how do we put this recipe together? Easy. In a medium bowl, combine the flour, spices, and cocoa powder. In a separate bowl, beat together the butter and brown sugar until the mixture is fluffy. Add the honey and vanilla Beat until combined. Then, in a small bowl, dissolve the baking soda in one and a half teaspoons of boiling water. Beat half of flour mixture into butter mixture. Beat in baking soda mixture, then remaining half of flour mixture. Add the chocolate chips and refrigerate for 30 minutes. Then, you will preheat the oven to 325 degrees. Line a baking sheet with parchment paper. Then you will roll dough into two inch balls. Roll dough balls in granulated sugar and place on baking sheet. Flatten slightly. Then transfer to oven and bake until surfaces crack slightly, about 18 to 20 minutes and that is it my friend take them out and let them cool before eating and there you have it now go make this recipe yours and remember what happened to Montezuma when he met Quetzal allegedly and until I have another wonderful recipe for you as always in Joy.
Thank you for joining us on this voyage. Thanks to Art by Chalet for the logo, episode, and t-shirt designs. You may also get a t-shirt and other items on tpublic.com. You can contact me on all socials at AfroTalesCast. That's Afro, T-A-L-E-S, cast. And email me at AfroTalesPodcast at Yahoo.com. You may also become a benefactor by simply sharing with any and everyone, giving a thumbs up, or rating in your podcast app of choice. If you wish to donate, I am on Patreon and coffee.com. That's ko-fi.com. So, until we meet again, may your winds be fair and your seas follow. <laughs>